Hi, I'm Tori, and today I'm going to be reviewing Don't Point That Thing at Me by Kyrielle Bonfiglioli. I listened to the audiobook narrated by Simon Preble. Now, I actually picked this book up because I listened to Simon Preble's narration of Mrs. Queen Takes the Train, and I loved it so much. I looked to see what other books he had narrated, and this one sounded very interesting. This book was so much fun. It was written in the 70s, and it follows Charlie Mordecai, who is kind of a gentleman art thief. I would almost describe him as a combination of Neil Caffrey and Ignatius J. Riley, which sounds like it should be a very weird combination, but somehow it just works so marvelously. And you get this wonderful, very sophisticated character who knows how to enjoy life, but is also fairly conceited and lazy as well. He's so smart and so lazy and just so much fun to watch. So if you want to read this weird, ridiculous story about this incredibly tenacious and charismatic main character who gets himself into all kinds of different situations, then I highly recommend you go read this book and come back to hear my opinions. I was so hooked by the opening of this book. You see Charlie Mordecai just lounging around his house and you know the inspector comes by and Charlie knows right away what's going to happen. He's and he almost intentionally gets himself arrested and he's being tortured and all this horrible stuff is happening but he all kind of planned for it and you just kind of feel in awe of this amazingly intelligent character who just functions this way and this is kind of what he expects out of life. I loved watching his relationship with Jock and how he was kind of like a butler, bodyguard, jack-of-all-trades, personal servant. I loved how incredibly British this book was, and even when Charlie went to America, he was still so British, and it made me want to go back to England so much. And I'm still a little confused about the character of Charlie. I don't quite know how smart he actually was, because he definitely thinks he's incredibly smart, and the way he's telling this story, he wants you to be so impressed. And at the beginning, it does feel that way. It feels like he has things so planned out. But then from the moment he gets to America, kind of it's like he forgets how to think and he does such incredibly stupid things. He goes on a drinking binge that lasts days and days and just doesn't think at all and does incredibly stupid things that end up leading to him having to go on the run. And then once he's on the run, he does get smarter, but you still don't quite know because he seemed so just brilliant at the beginning of the book and then just chose not to think at all during this second part of the book, you don't really know how much he intended and how much he didn't and when things got out of hand. I was also fascinated by the ending. I would say that this story was a tragedy and you see someone who is kind of too cocky and too self-assured and who didn't think he needed to think at all on his journey and that got him into trouble and you see his downfall and you see his death, you know, because it ends with him finishing up his journal and saying, okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to die, but I'm going to try to take my detective friend down with me because they have they have this interesting relationship, you know, where they're kind of friends, but they'd be willing to kill each other too. And you would absolutely assume that he did just die. This was kind of a tragedy and you can maybe try to learn from his mistakes and see what happened. But this is the first book in a series, so somehow he must not die unless the other books are flashbacks. That would be interesting too, if the other books are just flashbacks, but somehow I was assuming they weren't. So we've just watched his horribly tragic demise where he gets the only person in his life he really loves killed and all this horrible stuff happens and you're really set up to think that Charlie is dead now, but we don't really know. It's very ambiguous. So I'm very curious to see what happens in the next book. I don't know if it'll take place in the future and somehow Charlie got out of it, or if it's a flashback, or what's going to happen. This book was so strange. I still don't quite know what to think about it. I don't know how smart Charlie was. I don't know if he lived or died at the end. I have a lot of questions, but I definitely did enjoy the experience and enjoy this very lavish, fun romp.